He is our city manager. Most days. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this Saturday, uh, November 13th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, we'll begin, uh, we'll once again host our Maker's Market downtown uh, last around the, uh, the uh, historic courthouse, so please make your plans to attend. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this because I'm quite certain the mayor is during his time, but I'm going to go ahead before he does and talk about what's happening next week. Uh, as most of you, I'm sure you know that uh, the Smart City Awards that we won for the state last year, we won now national-wise, and now we're going for a global award um, in Barcelona, Spain. On November 17th at 7 a.m., City Hall Annex will have a watch party to see if we actually do win the award. Right, Pat? Uh, so we want all you guys to attend. Uh, we'll have some other folks in attendance as well. As well. So we'll be watching live for them to say City Hall is a global winner of the Smart City Award. Uh, we'll have breakfast. Uh, to get you there at 7 a.m., you got to have a little energy. So we'll have breakfast there, nice breakfast for you. Uh, the exciting thing is, I mean, we're one of five American cities, U.S. cities, that is up for this award. So I just think that gives us a remarkable chance to win. So, Larry Ogden will be going with, with the mayor over, and Larry is so excited. And I'm, I'm so proud, so proud for Larry. They're going to Barcelona. Uh, they're going to Barcelona. I, 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 I have uh, I've waited as long as I can to uh, say that there will be some financial assistance hopefully from the committee in Georgia Tech that will help us get over there. So uh, we'll worry about all that. But Larry Ogden is going with the mayor and he is so excited. I'm so proud for Larry. He does such a tremendous job for this city. All right, one of the order this we need to do. Uh, you know, a few months back, we set our community engagement police board. Uh, since that time, Councilman Vickers representative has uh, had to had moved out into the county so he couldn't uh, uh, be on the uh, uh, committee or the board. Also, more recently, uh, Councilman Norton's representative also declined to serve on the board, so uh, we've been find, helping get, uh, Councilman Norton find his repl replacement. So, uh, Councilman Vickers' re replacement is uh, Thomas McIntyre. And Councilman Norton's is uh, Gail Green. There, there doesn't have to be a vote. We just wanted, like I said, get it in the minutes for Teresa. So Councilman Norton is Ms. Gail Green. And Mr. Thomas McIntyre is uh, Councilman Vickers' rep. Be happy to answer any other questions you may have. And Mark, I don't have to tell you, sense of urgency on that as well, please. On, on the first meeting of that organization, please. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, uh, well, we'll definitely do that. Council, any questions for Mark? Thank you, Mark. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, you see, I didn't move. I was waiting. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> Thank you, I just want to ask one little quick yes, question. I have to ask this because it keeps coming up to me with different people. And it is about the CARES Act and the ARPA money that we yes, had coming. Um, I just want to ask, I know we had, uh, you had an idea of some of the projects that you were planning on doing. Have you kind of like discussed anything like a ratio of what they're going to get or how you're going to... Uh, Disperse it, or when you're going to start doing it, or you're going to tell no, it? We haven't. The, the only, you're correct, um, the only list that I've distributed to anybody is to Mayor and Council. Uh, the, the, you know, I did that uh, probably two months ago on an email with all any of your ideas that you might have had, staff's ideas, my ideas. Uh, uh, we wrote down that maybe what other communities we saw there doing the like. So that list has not changed. Uh, We've not allocated any type of funding to those different kind of projects, uh, but there are a list of projects and that, that hasn't changed. Uh, so that, that list remains the same, but I've only distributed that list to, right. to you guys until we get the final, uh, the final regs in. But I just want to ask one question, because I thought they had a deadline that they had given the guidelines, because they brought down another deal. Yeah, they, the infrastructure deal. We also have the, what, the 140.50? That's that executive order Mr. Robinson speaks of, Executive Order 1539. No, I'm thinking about another one that's uh, come down with the, um, the uh, president case. Is it another executive order? You haven't heard about the 140.50? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. I know 1539. 
Okay, yeah, that's 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 you know that was what I'm saying. I thought though we don't have the guidelines have not been clear yeah, yet. I was at a meeting last week in Columbus with many of city counties and cities and uh, municipalities. Uh, Larry Hampson, GMA Executive Director, told us all they had no idea when they were going to get the, the guidance. What about the infrastructure? The money that has come down for infrastructure bills, have we received that? Uh, we, we have not received information on that, when that would all be happening. It, it was just past a conference. Okay, but I, okay. I didn't know about those guidelines, but you know, one, um, our money, I thought those were acceptable. <coughs> you had your guidelines, deadline for that, and you can make it, you can make a decision. Now, which I think you're thinking of, the state of Georgia has ARPA funding just as local governments do. Mm -hmm. So you can go through the, the state portal and request infrastructure projects so you don't have to take that of our local share when we get those final regs. Now, we have done that. That's not the well, there is an infrastructure bill that was just passed, and we don't have any guidance on that how that's going to come down to us as of yet. Uh, but we have taken advantage of the state, uh, the state of uh, ARPA funds, um, so we're hoping to hear from that at some point in time. We have taken advantage of the state ARPA funds. Yes, the state got funding just as local governments. They're in the same holding pattern as we did, as we are. Um, so you were able to go in that portal and, you know, depending on those four areas of economic development, uh, further spread of pathogens, of those four major principles, and they have funding available, they allow local governments to, to request funding as well. We've done that for water plan on the south side of town. Uh, it's something that we've had for, yes ma'am. South side. Well, I, I, it, it was, that's where it will serve. Uh, you say that word, you're going to ask for trouble. Well, you yeah, know, I got to the point now, comes woman, uh, I've given all these gentlemen what I consider South Side many days. I'm talking about them. And, it was a council woman saying something about the South Side. When I'm saying, you're saying that word. So you, you think I'm talking about one particular group, but I'm not. Okay. I, I, it will serve in the underserved area of the city of Alaska. Thank you. And so I think it has a great chance of making it. Um, certainly hope so. No matter what you call it, it's the other service area of the city of Alaska. It'll be a great project no matter what it's called or where it's located. I have a question and I'm going to direct me. Uh, about m allocating money that come down from the executive board and it said about giving citizens, individual, human infrastructure, uh, uh, allocating money to them. That's what I'm talking about. I want to know. The executive order that Mr. Robinson speaks of. No, okay, not that. Not, it's my understanding he's asking for the city to apply for a special. Mm -mm. No. The, the only executive order that I know about. Uh, what did he uh, say he was asking the city to do? He wants us, he says with this executive order, let me, executive order says this right now that President Biden in January issued executive order 1539 telling all of his federal departments that they that dispersed federal dollars down to a local level, investigate it, review it, tell me why it doesn't get to the underserved areas of the community. That's all that's happening right now. But Mr. Robinson says he's read parts that, um, you know, he won't, those dollars, if there ever becomes any dollar value from that, mm -hmm. that we get funding, um, you know, he wants a group to get that funding and make the decisions on how to spend that funding. That, that's what he's asking for now. Uh, it's not to that point, like I said right now, all it is is President Biden has asked his folk, his staff, to look at it. Now, I specifically uh, asked him, and he said, I'm not asking it for our organization. We want the city to apply for it so that the city can use it. But, but I think it helps one of where the confusion sets in. There's nothing to apply for. There's no dollar out there yet. It's just a procedure for federal departments to look for those barriers of getting that funding to underserve. There's, there's, there, there's no talk of a dollar value yet. And he, and he did mention several times about what he's spending on the South Side of Man. He is asking for, well, he asked for 
Here's what he's asking for, really. He's asking for us to collaborate okay. and partnership with him and his group now, but they uh, but they want a large uh, say so in how that money spent through this partnership. And we've all agreed with okay. Mr. Robinson every time he's been up here, we will definitely be interested in some kind of partnership. There's just nothing there right now, quite honestly, to create a partnership because you don't know what, what it's going to be. Not, yet. Okay, but that's okay. not really my question. Okay. My question is according to some of the guidelines with the um, executive board, 13985, there was stated that there would be funding for small businesses, like maybe uh, for human, for people who had problems and they lost business due to COVID and everything like that. That is what I'm asking about. I'm not talking about just South Side or something. There are a lot of people who are like uh, beauty salon people who cannot get started back. There are other people who have their businesses stopped and get. That is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Reverend Robinson's book. And that's why mm -hmm. I always come back to saying, saying, that's not what it is. There were some other uh, guidelines for other groups. I mean, I'm not bringing it back to him. I think either council or I'm just saying the only executive order I know about is what I've discussed with Mr. Robinson. I'm not familiar with years. ARPA funding does allow, it allow exactly what you're speaking of it to make not, business. It does not. I'm asking, I'm just saying. Uh, it does. Clear, it it does. does. It does. If a company, I think that this was part of the interim regs. I, again, I'm waiting for the final because they were, they, they were going back and forth with these, what was going to be expected, but what that business had to show to prove they were negatively affected by COVID. Okay. But there is, we, we can. And it's on the list. We can make small business loans or grants, however you want to term it, through the ARPA funds. But that business, I think, is going to have to show substantial information right. in order to qualify. So that's their ARPA and the interim rates. I don't know how it's going. To, I don't know how it panned out in the final rates. So that is an ARPA. We haven't got the guidelines to determine yes, how they did. That's right. That's an ARPA. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And that would come from the Treasury Department. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's who we're waiting on here exactly. So that may not even know what the problem is. <laughs> well, yeah. And as a matter of fact, in the meeting I was in last week in Columbus, we had several governments stand up and said they were sending by the ARPA funds. Well, they, they, they were there. The news and also, too. Now, there are several who have already, I don't know how they've got their guidelines, but they have been using it as well. So. Okay. Yeah, there, there's, a few, there's a few larger governments that have, and um, I've heard actually one one is already uh, going to be issued a citation, if you will, for illegal use of the funding. And I've heard of some who, when the cities who have given it to some of their people, and the people have used it. So there's yeah. a lot of things that you know, have. That's the one thing we have, great point. The one thing we have done that I felt very confident that we could do based on interim was to reward our employees who worked during the COVID time. They did a fantastic job and they deserve that. And we found a way to do it. Uh, uh, once again, using the ARPA funds that we felt was the spirit and the intent of ARPA. And then we used the rest of it with the CARES Act from prior year. So it felt very comfortable about that. And we have not given any of them. Any, you know, use our, our performance for anything else. Okay. Yes, we're waiting on that list, yes, ma'am. The list that you got is our list of ideas, and we'd be happy to add to those every day as you come up with ideas. Any other questions for Mark? Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you, so welcome. That is our city manager's report. And, and well done, you two. You got there. Council comments. 